His dream growing up was to be in a World Cup. Could his big chance come at the age of 31? You were named 20 years ago. The elders were still here. I definitely remember that play pretty vividly. The ball was put in the box and Jermaine Jones won it and knocked it down to me. And it's one of those ones that, you know, I definitely need to do better. I need to get on frame 100%. I need to score that. Hands went up. Did that just happen? And I remember someone saying, he had one job. Wondolowski misses an easy chance that I think wasn't as easy as it at first appeared. And it's an unbelievable moment because the U.S. has been getting run over the whole game. And then they have this chance and they can steal the win and they don't. Throughout the whole overtime, I really thought I was going to get another chance. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. Belgium scored two quick goals in overtime and held off a late American rally to knock out the United States 2-1. Immediately, Twitter blows up with hate messages. You know, it's an easy goal and he should have finished it. And there's some pretty brutal stuff on there. You put a striker on, you want him to take his chances. He missed that first. I mean, have it come within reach right there, you know? Hurts me to see Wando miss that goal. Of course, I had to read those because, you know, it is the World Cup and I wanted to make sure nothing was too real and also just for my family in general. I had no problem with people saying stuff because that's their opinion. That was an opportunity that would have cemented his name in the pantheon of American soccer history. But it was one play. There were 10 other players on the field for the United States that day against Belgium. You know, you always think of the what ifs and what could have been. I visualized uh, that ball in the back of the net and uh, changing the, the course of things. It's one of those things where I wish I could have back. It will always kind of haunt me in that sense. The support I had, the leaders like Clint Dempsey, Michael Bradley, Tim Howard, especially at that moment where you just got knocked out of the World Cup, uh, it's pretty easy to point fingers. and. There's a lot of fingers that could have been pointed at me, but they were true teammates and had my back. That's one of the toughest moments any soccer player is ever gonna have, to miss a goal that you should have scored to make the quarterfinals of the World Cup. And he didn't shy away from it. He answered the questions, he stood there, said I'm sorry, and disappointed everyone, and that just shows so much about his character. Still, I think slowly sinking in that I got to play on the World Cup. I was definitely very devastated for a while after just because it was a tough moment. It had been a couple months since uh, I got to play with these guys, so it's fun that I got to be on the field and battle with them again. A true warrior is not defined by his worst defeat, but rather his courage to never stop fighting. Wadalowski's shot is in! It's nice just to be home and to see your family, see your wife and baby, and I love playing this game, but that's where I get my true smile. In search of a new beginning, Badai turned to his heritage. After a whirlwind 2014 season, the warrior returned to the Kiowa tribe in Oklahoma to reconnect with his roots. Welcome back to the Kiowa tribe of Oklahoma. It's an honor to be here this morning. My grandma, she's a member of the Kiowa and was one that really kind of instilled this heritage and just who I am. They had a viewing party and there was a big following there and so they had a great turnout and watched the game and you get them all together, they'll have fun. On May the 22nd, 2014, it was announced that Christopher Wondolowski had been selected to one of the final 23 players chosen for the 2014 World Cup to represent the United States of America. He is a half Native American descendant who was born to the common tribe of Oklahoma. It's an honor to be able to come back and visit uh, Riverside Indian School. My grandma and fellow relatives went here, and it's also nice to connect an image to all the stories that my grandma has told me, and just to see the history and learn even more about it. During my story, I always have to try to impress one thing, persevere. I had uh, many times I've been cut from teams, I've been knocked down, but it's the times I've gotten back 
Back up. Riverside was established in 1871. It's an off-reservation boarding school. With Chris coming back, it shows our kids that anything's possible because a lot of them, you know, they need good positive role models. You know, you definitely do have your bad days where you get frustrated and you want to do better. And something that I love about soccer is that you can still affect other things. Even though if you're not playing your best, if you're not scoring the goal or, you know, making every pass, you can still affect many different things by just your work ethic alone. <laughs> When he said that his grandmother attended school here, you could hear that gasp from the youth out there and it made me cry. I've never met anybody that famous. That told us that that generational curse was broken. And these children can be achievers. These children can become what Christopher has worked so hard for. We're all very proud of him. But it was more than just a family reunion for Badai. We're really trying to get movement in Indian country. And uh, you know, it's such a big problem with diabetes running rampant and it's something that we can control. And it's something where exercise can really help us out uh, doing a camp in Carnegie. And so I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> There's so many problems with obesity and diabetes, and so it's very important for kids to get out there and just get exercise. I think soccer is a great tool for them to have because you just need a little bit of land and then a ball, and you can go out there and play. All right, so coming in, you step over and then push it the other way. Oh, I like it. I like it. Give some high fives, please. Give some high fives. Thank you. We're a Kiowa tribe. There's more kids that have signed up for soccer and they all look at Chris as their very close relative. For them to participate in the success, it just is really important. The boots of the first tribally enrolled Native American to play for the United States in the World Cup were enshrined in the Kiowa Tribes Museum. Don't never forget who you are. You're a part of me, I'm a Kiowa, you're a Kiowa. The, the creator wanted it any other way where you'd be somebody else. Before the final honor powwow in Kiowa territory, Bod I traveled to Carnegie, Oklahoma to see his beloved great aunt Dorothy Whitehorse, the woman who named him. We wanted to see you play so bad today. You should have seen the excitement there. I've, I've, I've been around in this world, but that was the most exciting time in my life. <laughs> Thank you, and I appreciate all the support and everything that you've done because you really have made the path and made this possible. I want you to know something. Yeah? You were named 20 years ago. The elders were still here. Oklahoma as well as the United States of America. They named you because they seen something in you that was going to be good. Every single generation for Native Americans, we want to better ourselves. It starts from a local tryout. We want to get out of that victim mentality and we want to start just showing ourselves to the world. To a guy who was having an apprentice contract and finding minutes in the Reserve League and then finally getting his chance. It's a big mistake. What the Scoring goals, getting national team appearances, scoring goals for the national team, getting called up to the World Cup and seeing them step out in the field. Representing Kiowa Nation, representing American Indians, and representing the United States. It's a lot of history in a short period of time. Persevere. Persevere. He keeps persevering. Bodai. Never forget that. Bodai.